and welcome back. Today we will have lecture 3-2 on feedback control. So far in this course, we have discussed the reactive control architecture, including specific examples, subsumption architecture, and the potential fields method. However, sometimes for low level control, you don't need a control architecture at all. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about industrial controllers, such as P, PI, PD, and PID. When you have these very low level controllers, they can be implemented in hardware or software, and they can be easy and fast to use without having a more complicated control architecture. The objectives of today's lecture are to compare and contrast open loop and closed loop control, to describe in more detail proportional, integral, and derivative controllers, as well as to show how to implement a wall following behavior by using an industrial controller. Feedback control is a means of getting a robot to achieve and maintain a desired state, such as by tracking or to a point. This is also called a servo mechanism or regulation. The desired state or goal state is the set point and it is achieved by continuously comparing its current state with its desired state. The difference between the current and desired state is the error. The goal of any control system is to minimize the error. Feedback control is the lower level of control theory for controlling wheels or continuously moving actuators. However, for achieving higher level goals related to robot control, such as navigation, coordination, interaction, collaboration, or human-robot interaction, it is necessary to use techniques from the field of artificial intelligence by creating a control architecture, which we've talked about earlier in the course. Open loop control does not use sensory feedback, such as what's shown by this driver texting instead of looking at the road. In feed-forward control, the command signal is a function of some parameters measured in advance. It's effective only if they are well calibrated, such as the plant has a very well-defined model, the environment is predictable and does not change. To compare and contrast open loop versus closed loop control, we have two examples here of a robot following a wall. One of them where you give motor commands and then the robot moves, but there's no kind of error correction, and the other where you use an infrared sensor or sonar or laser or something in order to get feedback. In the second model, the controller will adjust motor power or the turn ratio in order to correct for the distance so that the robot will more accurately follow the wall as opposed to having a jerky motion. The error signal. In feedback control is when a system achieves and maintains a desired state by continuously comparing its current and desired states, then adjusting the current state to minimize the difference. So the error is the difference between the current state and the desired state, and you can have zero or non-zero error, and it tells whether there is an error or not, and that's the least amount of information you could have. But more useful is direction of error, which way to go in order to minimize the error. You can also have the magnitude of the error, which gives you the distance to the goal state, or you can have overshoot, which is when the robot goes beyond its set point or position or changes direction before stabilizing. Control is much easier if we know both the magnitude and direction of the error.